You can recognize that beard a mile away when he just pops up in your IG live screen right there. How you doing, Max? Uh, I'm doing good. How you doing, man? Everything's good. Thanks for joining us on your first golden off day. We really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no problem, man. It was, uh, it was a long road trip. Uh, you know, you're definitely not ready for that kind of thing. Yeah, right? You start at Coors Field. Four games at Coors Field and then no day off, and you have to go to Oakland. That was uh, – Quite a successful road trip for you guys to pull off five wins. Yeah, you know it was uh, it was good. Uh, you know, starting uh, starting the season in Colorado can be pretty rough. Um, you know, it, it can be good for the offensive numbers, but uh, that you know that all depends on how cold it is. And we we lucked out; we had great weather. Uh, you know, the fans were awesome there. It was fun to have them back, and uh, uh, you know, it just makes us all the more excited for uh, this weekend. Yeah, I was going to ask you, especially on a day like yesterday, a day game after a night game, you're at the end of a long seven-game road trip to start the year, to have even 6,500 at the Oakland Coliseum cheering for you, does that give you a little bit of adrenaline? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, without the fans, yesterday would have been a real drag. But, uh, uh, you know, they, they've been great so far through this first week of the season, and, uh, you know, we haven't even been home yet, so – uh, you know, the Dodgers faithful have been traveling in large numbers, and we can't wait to see them at home. Yeah, it sounded like on the radio and on television that there were a lot of Dodger fans at Coors Field. Was I right about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, opening day there, I don't know what they said the percentage was. I think they said it was like 44% of fans were allowed, but it definitely felt more like it was 90%, and, uh, you know, a good chunk of that was, was the blue and white. So it was it was fun to have them out there. They were loud. It was, it was great, and, uh, uh, you know, you just – you kind of forget how much you miss the, miss the fans. I'm not going to say you did it on purpose, but I'm going to think that it's sweet that you hit your first home run of the season while you're in Oakland, just to remind everybody what they're missing out on. Yeah, I don't know if it was on purpose or not. It's just, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm feeling good at the plate right now. I feel like I'm seeing the ball well. My swing's tuned in right where I want it. And, um, you know, I just – got a good swing on a ball and it went out but you know it definitely makes uh it definitely makes it all the more sweeter when it's against a team that released you yeah i mean I, people don't realize that while you're at the plate you're not thinking revenge 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 <laughs> but when you're rounding the bases does a little uh smile come across your face for that reason well it's a home run there's always a smile on your face <laughs> if, you, if you don't have a smile on your face after hitting a home run then uh you're probably playing baseball for the wrong reasons Hey, Max, a lot of people don't know this, but he let me in on a little secret, I guess, that Zach McKinstry worked out with you in January. He met up with you and a couple of teammates. I mean, are we going to take – are we going to let Max Muncy take all the credit for the secret weapon, Matt, Zach McKinstry, so far? Absolutely not. That's all him. Uh, you know, the guy's a very talented player. He's smart. He, uh, he wants to go out there and work hard. He wants to work at the right things, and he's always asking the right questions. You know, he's trying to ask – um, you know, what, what should I do on this approach? What do you think on this pitcher? Uh, you know, defensively, he's, he's always trying to ask the right questions and work. So he takes all the credit himself. Uh, no one, if anyone tries to take any credit for that, uh, they're lying. That's all him. That guy's a great player and it's going to be fun to watch him. Yeah. And I've always heard veterans say this. They always appreciate it when the young player comes to them to ask instead of the veteran offering advice. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's kind of an old school thing about baseball. Um, you know, it's, it's, you should go, you, you're almost supposed to be scared of the veteran guys, but at the same time, you're supposed to be the one that goes and asks them. And, uh, uh, you know, he's been fitting right in. He's a great guy. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's just gonna be really great to watch him all year long. I think he's gonna do some special things. Another young player that's gotten off to a good start is Gavin Lux. Maybe you can let us in on what this is about every time he does something good. Can you let us in on it? I could, but I'm not going, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Okay, sounds good. We'll keep that in the clubhouse for sure. Uh, <laughs> Max, Muncy, Max Muncy is brought to us by Navian Tankless Water Heaters with proven performance for efficient and endless hot water. Visit tanklessmadesimple.com. Max, forget about the road trip. All anybody in LA cares about is the ring ceremony tomorrow. How excited are you for, for that day? Yeah, I'm pumped. Uh, you know, I have no idea what to expect. Um, you know, I've never been a part of something like this. So uh, the whole thing's going to be new to to the majority of us. There's only one or two guys on this team that have won a ring before. And, uh, you know, I just I, – I can't wait to see what's going to happen. You know, being the Dodgers, I'm sure they're going to go all out. I'm sure it's going to be a very special day. And, uh, you know, I, I can't wait for it. I got, I got something special of my own planned. I got some uh, custom cleats made. So uh, be on the lookout for those. 
that'll go well with your new jerseys and new hat that you guys will be wearing tomorrow too, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, the the cleats are pretty special to me, and uh, uh, you know, when everyone sees them, I think they'll uh, I think they'll understand why. All right. Well, thank you for sharing with sharing that with us. We'll keep an eye out for Muncie when they hand you that bling. We'll take a look at the cleats. Yeah, don't worry. I'll make sure the camera gets them. That's for sure. All right. Good. Good. Uh, how how long was it in the works for you to get these cleats ready for tomorrow? Uh, you know, it wasn't too long. Um, you know, I reached out to a group on uh, on Instagram actually they're called uh, Stadium Custom Kicks, and uh, you know, they they do a lot of the custom kicks for a lot of the players out there. And you know, I reached out and said, hey, I want to do something special for uh, for our ring ceremony for opening day, and. Um, you know, we uh, we we kind of got together, came up with an idea. They made it, and uh, you know, they were actually ready for opening day in Colorado. But uh, I wanted to save them. Uh, you know, I think it'd be a little more special when uh, I bust them out for the rings. That's awesome. And I'm curious when when the schedule came out, and you're looking to see when that first home game is. So uh, was that the first thing you looked for when you saw the schedule come out? Uh. Yeah, um, you know, I think we're just excited to get going and not have any stops this year. Uh, you know, last year was a little, uh, you know, a little interesting with, uh, you know, your, um, you know, the season stops and then you got to go through and get ready again and do spring training all over again. So for us, I was just uh, excited to go from spring right into the season. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many teams have won a World Series and then opened up on the road, but, uh, you know, it just creates, creates all the more uh, uh, anticipation for the fans. And, uh, you know, I know they're going to be crazy out there. Has there been some chatter amongst players maybe the last couple of days uh, about the home opener, about getting your ring? Uh, no. Uh, you know, this team is so good about focusing on what we have to do to win games that uh, there hasn't been any look ahead. There hasn't been any look, look behind. And, you know, every day we show up to the clubhouse, it's, uh, you know, what can we do today to win this game? No one's talking about what's going on. And, uh, you know, I think the only other thing people have been talking about has been, uh, you know, uh, the Masters going on right now. But other than that, it's been focused on, on baseball. Yeah, who are you picking for the Masters, Muncie? Uh, I got a, I got a couple guys out there. You know, we'll, we'll see if they we'll see if they pull through for me. We looking at Dustin Johnson, or is that too mainstream for you? No, I think I think I got DJ. Uh, I, I got a, I got a good group of guys. I, I I don't know exactly who all I have, but I got I got some good ones. All right. So speaking of other sports, you're a sports fan. Hard to ignore the fact that the Baylor <laughs> Bears won the national championship the day that you were DHing. Now, can you please tell me? Whether or not Dave Roberts did you a favor by having you DH so you could go back and watch the game in between at bats. I mean, if we're being completely honest, he did me a favor by DHing me after playing four games in the field in Colorado. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's that's not an easy place to go to in the middle of the year, and it's definitely not an easy place to go to at the start of the year. So, uh, you know, I really needed that DH day, and uh, you know, it kind of just worked out that it happened to be on the same night. And uh, you know, it, it wasn't planned; it just happened to be a coincidence. But you know, for me, it was uh, you know. It was unbelievable to be able to, you know, obviously I was watching, I was watching the boys out on the field, but I was, I was sneaking up to the locker room as much as I could to uh, catch a glimpse of the boys out on the court. All right. Where was it? What can you describe if you saw the final uh, seconds tick off the clock between Baylor and Gonzaga? Uh, unfortunately, I did not. Uh, I ran up. I saw the score. I saw they were, they were up by about 15 or so with, uh, with a minute left. And I said, all right, I got to go back and get ready to hit. I know they took care of business. Now it's time for me to go take care of business. Oh, I like that, Muncie. And you hit a home run the same night. Uh, yeah, you know, it was pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> you know, I, no, I, no, I, it was the next night I hit the home run, I think. The next night, okay. But, but I did have three hits, so that was, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's always nice to do that. Yeah, for sure. You delivered, no doubt. Max Muncy is with us on this great IG Live. And by the way, I'm not sure if you know, Muncy might seem like a humble type of guy. He might have some fancy cleats tomorrow, but I heard um, I heard you're driving up to the stadium tomorrow. And Describe the color and uh, whether or not you'll top 65 on the way to the stadium. Uh, I think I lost you for a second there. You got to repeat what you said. Yeah, it was, you know, you told us about the fancy cleats, but I heard you have a fancy new Ram Limited that you'll be driving to Dodger Stadium tomorrow. So uh, can you let yeah. us know what color it is, if you got the rim spinning, what color it might be? Will you top 65 tomorrow on the way to the stadium? Uh, no, I don't, got, I don't got the rims on there. That's, uh, you know, I got black rims. It's, I, it's, that's as fancy as I'll go for that. And uh, I'm definitely not going to top 65. Um, you know, traffic in L.A. is real. Uh, you can't really uh, – <laughs> if you're going more than 65, you're putting yourself in a real danger there. So, uh, you know, it's a big thanks to the guys at, at, uh, at Premier. 
uh, you know, they've taken real good care of me. They've, uh, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed working with them. I hope we hope I get to uh, keep working with them. And, you know, they gave me an awesome vehicle and it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to drive. I love it. It's, it's really cool. Um, you know, I definitely recommend that for everybody. Hey, Muncie, you might not have to ever pay for a meal in LA after winning the world series and being an October type of player. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, but, uh, you know, unfortunately we can't really go out to eat right now. Uh, you know, maybe once, uh, uh, maybe once once things settle down a little bit, we'll uh, you know be able to get out and see some of the fans in public. You know, it's always a fun experience when you see guys and they're uh, you know you, you just see fans that come up there. They want to talk to you. They want to get a picture. It's always a fun experience. Uh, you know, so maybe before too long, things can get back to normal. Hey, I thought it was really cool that you and Justin Turner and some of the other guys were throwing baseballs to the fans, doing as much as you could to interact with them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's kind of. Uh, one of the things that I loved about the Dodgers when I came over here and, uh, uh, you know, this is by no way like a knock on Oakland, but when I was over there, it was kind of like, Hey, you know, throw the ball back into the dugout when you're done throwing it around. And over here, you know, in spring training, you have meetings and they're like, Hey, we want you to throw as many balls in the stands as you guys can. So it's kind of, you know, that's one of the things I've always loved about the Dodgers is how they love to take care of their fans. And, you know, I'm, I'm honored to be able to, to do my part in that. And, uh, you know, I'm always, I'm always trying to look for people to toss the ball to. Uh, it's getting a little bit tougher now with the nets all the way around the field. So it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, those, those guys in the lower sections, it's hard to drop it in there. But, uh, you know, I'll do the best I can to, to get it to everybody. I asked you this at FanFest last year and just the reaction that you got when you came on the stage from Dodger fans. You'd had only been here for, what, a year, year and a half, two years? And it feels like they've embraced you like you've been here for 10 years, have come up through the minor leagues. Are you even – surprised by how much the fan base has embraced you in such a short time always you know the fans are unbelievable and uh you know the way they've welcomed me and my family into uh the city of la into the you know the, the dodgers organization has been uh it's been pretty incredible it's something that i'm gonna cherish forever and you know uh you know god willing hopefully i'll be able to end my career as a dodger that's something that'd be you know extremely special to me and so uh you know hopefully i can go out there and keep performing at a level that helps the team win and you know that'll make those guys want to keep it around and tomorrow, you know, I've heard of players that have won World Series championships before, Max. They always say that bond lasts forever. You were on a great team in 2018. 2019 was a really good team. But they always say that when you win that World Series, it's, it's like a lifelong bond that will never be broken. Yeah, you know, I, I could definitely see that. Uh, you know, that was a very special team we had last year. You know, there's a lot of guys that have been through a lot of heartbreak over the years. And so for all of us to be able to come out on top, uh, you know, finally, for some of those guys that aren't here anymore, it was just extremely special. But at the same time, it made us even more hungry this year. Um, you know, everyone showed up and, you know, I've talked about it all the time. No one's talking about the World Series last year. Uh, you know, obviously this weekend it's going to be, you know, remembering it because we're getting our rings. But, uh, you know, I can promise you as soon as we get those rings, it's going to be back to business for this year. And, uh, you know, that's that's kind of the whole attitude the team's taken. And that's just how special of a team it is. Yeah, I, that's what really blows me away is how you guys have had that ability to lock in like you said day to day pitch to pitch that doesn't really that doesn't really happen all the time max it, it could happen for a 10 game stretch but how many teams do you know that one through eight one through 25 have that focus you don't see it that often no it's a definitely a special thing that we have and you know it's a big credit to the guys upstairs for putting together a team that uh, you know, that's, that's something they look at. They don't, they don't bring in people that they know have, you know, any kind of reputation of not going out there trying to win every single day. Every, every person that they brought into this clubhouse is, uh, you know, is here to, to win and do whatever they can to win. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not about yourself here. It's about, it's about the team and it's about the organization. And, uh, you know, when you're out, when you're part of an organization as great as the Dodgers, it's really not hard to buy into that. All right. Before I let you go, I'm going to, I guess get a little baseball geek with you because everybody just thinks you hit home runs and you play first base and you're versatile to play a couple of different positions. But I've been told and I have noticed that you are one of the smartest base runners the Dodgers have. Now, I know you made an out on the bases in the first series, which was shocking to me, almost as shocking as, you know, Mookie Betts making an error in the outfield. I'm serious. Uh, where does that come from? Uh, how, why are you such a great and smart base runner? Uh, you know, I kind of credit my dad for that. You know, when I was little, it was always just watching the games and him teaching me exactly what all you should do. And, uh, you know, you talk about that out I made on the bases. That was a big blunder by me. That was one of those things where I was trying to do too much almost. You know, I was tagging up, trying to draw the throw the third so the guy can score. And, 
uh, you know, I saw the ball out of his hand. I thought he made a great, uh, you know, I thought, I thought he made a great throw and I thought I was out by 20 feet. So I was going to stop to make sure that the run could score in time. And, uh, you know, the, uh, it, it, it turned out that he didn't make that great of a throw and I could have been safe. And so I kind of freaked out and, you know, it's a hundred percent on me. I'm always going to take, uh, I'm always going to take responsibility from my, my mess ups, but you got to learn from it. Uh, you know, you learn from the mistakes and you go out there and you keep going and, uh, you know, again, like I said, I credit my dad. You know, he's the one that always tried to teach me the the little basics about about uh, winning baseball games. And um, you know, a lot of everyone knows about home runs, but not everyone knows about the little things you can do. Uh, you know, just for example, you look at our game yesterday against the A's. Uh, you know, R Ramon Laureano gets hit by a pitch. He steals second. He steals third. And the next thing you know, a wild pitch goes by, and he's he's at home plate. And uh, you know, that's 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 how you can win a game without actually hitting a home run. It's a lot of. Uh, uh, there's a lot of things you can do out on the base pass. And so you got to just understand what you got to do. Do you believe you take teams off guard by how good of a base runner you are? Do you feel like they sleep on you when you're on the bases? Absolutely. Uh, you know, they, they see me, they see the body type and they think this guy's a, a big lug. He's not going to go running around the bases. So I like to use that to my advantage. And, uh, you know, I like trying to sneak things in here and there. Yeah. You don't have to be fast to be a great base runner, right? Max, tell the kids. Uh, no, you just, uh, uh, some of the best base runners out there are not the fastest people. You just got to know what you're doing. You got to be smart and you got to know what you're looking for. Dang right. That's like me. I got sneaky speed, Muncie. I've seen you run. You don't have any kind. <laughs> That's true. Who'd you, race, who'd you race a couple years ago, Gonzo? I, I saw that. That wasn't, that wasn't very pretty. Uh, he got a false start and I was wearing JT's cleats. Uh, come on. <laughs> you're not taking responsibility. It's not what you're supposed to do. You're right. I'm slow as molasses. I, I made a mistake by calling out a professional baseball player that I thought was really slow, but in real life, he's really fast. <laughs> baseball slow, real life fast. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, or you're just that slow. Who knows? A combination of both, Muncie. I will take accountability for that being slow. Skinny fat, it's not a good combination. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Thanks for doing this, and I can't wait for the ring ceremony. I'm so happy for the players. Uh, you guys did it. I know other people get credit in the media, but I know how tight you guys are, and you want to talk about accountability. I know how much you guys hold each other accountable, and I'm really excited for the players, the guys that left it on the field. So congratulations, Muncie. We'll look out for the cleats and enjoy the celebration tomorrow. You deserve it. Well, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it.